Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. So, happy what may or may not be Bodhidharma Day, everyone. I've seen it listed as anywhere from uh, October 2nd through 11th in that great Buddhist custom we have of flexible dates. So, I got my scroll up today. He's right there in the background, the red bearded barbarian. Bodhidharma, we're all probably pretty familiar with, had his uh, interview, his run in, his discussion with Emperor Wu Di. And one of the questions that the emperor had for him was regarding how much merit he had accrued by doing all these great things for the uh, Buddhists in his uh, empire. He built stupas, he built temples, he supported the monks, he protected them, he did any number of great things. And when this big deal Asian, South Asian monk came to visit China, the emperor thought, oh, okay, I, I've got to get with this guy. So he asked him, so just how much merit did I accumulate by doing all these great things? To which Bodhidharma replied, no merit whatsoever. Now, an outline of practice, one of the things that Bodhidharma is reputed to have said is this. The third method is seeking nothing. People of this world are deluded. They're always longing for something, always in a word, seeking. However, the wise wake up. To seek nothing is harmony. When you seek nothing, you are on the path. So ergo, that's where the emperor went wrong. He was seeking validation. He was seeking praise. He was seeking the great attaboy from this new monk from South Asia. And every week we go through a section of our service where we dedicate merit. So there's this whole thing of, well, Bodhidharma said there's no merit whatsoever, and yet here we are among any number of other Zen Sanghas that dedicate merit. So what's with this merit thing anyway? In the Diamond Sutra, uh, here's a little excerpt from chapter 24. Saburi if there were a person who accumulated the seven jewels in mounds equivalent to all the Mount Sumerus in the worlds of 3,000 galaxies and gave them away charitably, the merit gained by such a person compared to that of someone who memorized, recited, and explained to others as much as a four-line gatha of the scripture of transcendent wisdom, it would not amount to one hundredth nor would it amount to a billionth part. In fact, no metaphor of number is capable of describing this difference in merit. So here the Buddha is talking about merit. In uh, another chapter, he says, Subhuti, 
We can summarize by saying that the merit and virtue of this sutra is inconceivable, incalculable, and boundless. The Buddha has declared this teaching for the benefit of initiates on the path to enlightenment. He has declared it for the benefit of initiates on the path to nirvana. If there is someone capable of receiving, practicing, reciting, and sharing this sutra with others, the Buddha will see and know that person, and he or she will receive immeasurable, incalculable, and boundless merit and virtue. So as I said, every week for I don't know how long we've been doing it now, it's been a while, we do our dedication of merit. Now, why do we do that? Do we do it so we can walk up to some red-bearded barbarian and say, hey, every week we dedicate merit. Ain't we the greatest sangha going? Hopefully not. Do we do it in terms of I'm dedicated my merit to you? or someone else. Again, hopefully not. When we dedicate merit, it's to get outside ourselves, to eliminate the delineation between you and me, us and them, red and blue, green and yellow, black and white, whatever it might be, we're doing what we can to get ourselves beyond all that on the one hand. And on the other, we're also doing this in terms of showing some altruism showing some empathy. When someone is in a position where they are less fortunate than we are, we can feel their pain. If we can't fully feel their pain, we dedicate merit anyway, because they deserve to be thought of. They deserve to have their pain ameliorated. Whether our dedicating merit can do that or not. Dedicating merit is in some great cosmic hocus pocus, wave the magic wand and poof, I've dedicated merit. Ergo, your suffering is gone. It doesn't work like that. So far as I'm aware, anyway. It's certainly not the point of our doing it. One final thing from the Diamond Sutra. It's from chapter 19 which is known as no merit is great merit. So Budi, what do you think? If there were a person who was able to take enough of the seven jewels to fill all the worlds of the three galaxies and gave them away for charity, would it not based on these causes and conditions, there's the key word, remember it, causes and conditions, this person's merit be great? Subhuti so answers, yes, world honored one, based on these causes and conditions, this person's merit would be extremely great. Subhuti, so if this merit were real, the Tathagata would not say that there was attainment of great merit. It is because this merit is non-existent that the Tathagata says that the merit is great. 
anything subject to causes and conditions is characterized by shunyata, which is sometimes known as emptiness. It has no self nature. But as the Buddha says, even though merit as a mental construct, as a concept, is characterized by emptiness, we do it anyway. Because people of the world deserve it. <laughs>